The first thing you should know about me is I'm not a good woman, so I've never asked for a good man. Period. <laughs> anyway, hi guys. Um, this is Unboxed Interviews for Unboxed Magazine. And we're joined with Mumbi, who is a spoken word artist and a poet. Are those two the same thing? Yes, like, spoken word is like a new, like, more version fluid. of poetry. Yes, yes. It's like if Shakespeare was Gen Z. Yeah. yeah, he would definitely be a spoken word he artist. He would be like at open mics. Mm. Yeah. Otila. Yeah. Ot 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 <laughs> have you watched 21 Jump Street? So yeah. Like, Cynthia, <laughs> Cynthia, Jesus died for your sin. Be as. <laughs> that that would like. definitely be. That would definitely be Shakespeare. Yeah. And then all of us are like, mm, mm. I don't know, getting anything, but mm, yes. Anyway, so we're going to do rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Because I want to just show I'm boss, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, you get it right. <laughs> okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Best rock. two out of three. We're going again. Rock, paper, scissors. I'm a very bad loser. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Huh. I still won. Serious. But okay. Okay, you did win. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so aren't you to tell me something you've never told anyone? Like, this is confession. I'm your priest with boobs. <laughs> awesome. Uh -huh. Yeah. Tell me. Um, something I've never told anyone. Maybe something I've never, like, said in an interview. Uh, I feel like we've talked about so many things. Yes. <laughs> tell me. Um, well, one, I told I used to have 13 piercings. Insane. Yeah. Um, um, psychiatrist, you can call the hotline, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have 13 piercings. Uh -huh. I once shaved my hair completely bald. I, yeah, mm -hmm. it's 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 been a long it's that, been a it's been insane. a long fight, but you know. Are you are you like those those poets who are you know those lonely artists who are in a deep dark place? <laughs> <laughs> like those you know those artists, those ones who like walk around with bands. Yeah, moody artists and a beret. Mm -hmm. Like this guy who did the Starry Night. Picasso was it Picasso? Is it Picasso? It, I, I think no. it is Picasso. Or Who did the study Van Gogh. Van Gogh, yes, it's Van Gogh. Yeah. Do you know that guy was so depressed? Yeah. Like he drew the study night from his psychiatry room. Is he the one who like as he got older his paintings like became more childish? Yeah. He was the one. Yeah, yeah. It's that one. Okay. I yeah. Hate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not sure, but I think it's him. <laughs> yeah, so are you are you that type of artist? Would you say? Um, I don't know. I would say I use my art definitely to express myself, just because mm. I'm an only child. So like problematic. <laughs> <laughs> I see why you have. I'm also a Leo. Um, <laughs> I feel like that explains a lot. <laughs> that, that explains a lot. Like you did thirteen piercings. You're yes. an only child and you're a Leo. Like the math is mathing. It's mathing, yeah. It's mathing. Yeah. I mean, we see it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I was an only child, so I think like writing has just always been my way of like expressing Risky. myself. Yeah, because I was never like really good at like making friends as a yeah. child, and like you don't have other people to like, I don't know, let out. Yeah. Um, or be vulnerable with. Yes. Yeah, so I think spoken word for me makes sense. Yeah, in that sense. I I see. I uh, I see. So when when would you say you got into spoken word? Um, when I was in high school, I think mm. I was about 16 or 16, 17. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I always say I happened upon poetry mm. because so in high school I just mm. used to like write compositions a lot and yeah. like my English teacher used to love my writing. Yes. Then there was one time we had like an inter-school poetry competition and there was mm. no one to sign up for a category for original composition. So she signed me up. So then she sent me up the day before the comp the competition. So that night, I remember I went home and I wrote my first poem. I think like about a boy in my class or something. No. <laughs> I was sixteen. It's always about a boy, though. At like 16, at sixteen, like yes, I, mean, I mean, what else was I going to write about? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then so the next day we went for the competition. Mm. I was disqualified. 
because Why? the competition was for poetry, like you know, traditional poetry, like how a poem. Oh, with the la- I yeah. hate conventional stuff. Yeah, and I, I never studied it. poetry like that, yes, so I didn't yes. even know how to write a poem According like to. that. Mm-hmm. So what I wrote was a spoken word poem. It was just a story um, that rhymed and flowed. So anyway, they disqualified me. Um, Shame on you. But then after mm-hmm. high school, mm-hmm. I then went to Kwani Open Mic. Mm-hmm. It was an open mic. It still happens. It used to happen every first Tuesday of the month. Mm-hmm. And I performed there. Um, and then I found people who are doing like the same thing that I was doing. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, so I wasn't like crazy. Yes. <laughs> this exists. It exists, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I also performed at Poetry After Lunch, which happened at... I know Poetry. Uh, yeah. I know poetry after lunch. Yeah, I performed there for like yes, many years. Yeah, can't yeah. Yeah. yeah, ended up headlining one open, uh, Kwani open mic, I think mm. in 2017. I headlined one mm. poetry after lunch. Mm. And yeah, like I'm literally a child of open mics. Love it. Yeah. Love it. I, I, I like why you say that poetry was your way of expression. Because we have, like we have, I usually say we have this personality that presents itself to the world Mm -hmm. and then we have the personality that is us yeah you see and it is so rare for us to introduce people to us Mm -hmm. you see so writing definitely gives us the avenue to show people what are we really thinking yeah it should be vulnerable it should be yeah okay so um I'm gonna ask a very political question mm-hmm. because I'm just like that, you know. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, so how would you say your art challenges societal, like social norms? How are you breaking, you know, breaking the wheel, mm-hmm. making tangible social difference? Mm-hmm. And when I say tangible social difference, like, are you speaking on feminism? Are you speaking, yes, hey. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> I mean, say that. <laughs> are you speaking on? Are you speaking on feminism? Are you speaking? This is, these are just examples. You don't have to like. Yeah. Are you speaking on political activism? Are you speaking on cancel culture? You know what we yeah. talked about. Yeah. Are you speaking on things that we we see around us and we can't make sense of, mm-hmm. but we we know they have to be spoken on. Yeah. So mm-hmm. for me, I think. What I strive to do with my poetry is want to just unapologetically take up space yes, as a woman, as a, woman. As a black woman. Um, so a lot of my poems, I talk a lot about like um, love, heartbreak, sex. I have a few mm. um, political poems, especially this year. I started writing poetry for organizations. So mm. I've written a poem for UNICEF, mm. Global Financing Facility. Um, but my poetry is just mainly about just speaking my truth and taking up space yes. and allowing myself to be vulnerable. I think if there's anything that I want people to get out of my poetry is that it's okay to be vulnerable yes. and to let your guard down, mm. even if it's through your eyes. Like, I don't go telling everyone, like, oh my gosh, I'm so heartbroken. But like, no, <laughs> don't do that. But like, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, mm. But yeah, just yeah. through my poetry, I feel someone, when I started writing poetry, someone told me, you don't start writing poetry until you start telling the truth. I agree. Yeah, so I think just as based on my social context Mm. as a woman just Mm. talking about the things that affect me calling out the patriarchy um that's Mm. the best way i know how do you feel like you tapping into that resource of vulnerability has made you more intentional in how you live your life like you're not working with intentionality like the things you can't tolerate the Mm -hmm. things you can't be associated with and the things you call out because of that because i usually feel like the more we tap into that vulnerability the Mm. stronger we become Mm. even you know day to day you know you can only be strong if you are vulnerable yeah yes that me i don't know how to make sense of that but i know it's true yeah no Uh that's true but it Mm. is a struggle yeah Yeah. so i can't say that like i'm walking around every day with intentionality and yeah i'm not gonna tolerate this and that yeah i mean some of my best work come have come from tolerating Ah, (laughs) i know you're like adele girl stop right (laughs) but like i mean someone has to someone has to do it i mean we can all be happy (laughs) no but Yeah. yeah for sure i would say that like um 
getting to know myself mm. more and mm. better yes um it just helps me be kind to myself i have a friend who yeah. always says be kind to yourself and i always think about what does that mean what does it yeah, mean to be kind to, be kind to, to myself to yeah. yeah so i think that's something i think about every day just be kind to yourself i like that there's there's a time my sister told me my sister is in there be kind to her and i was like I do not exist in my mind. Yeah. I am an actual being. I am here. I'm present. Yeah. Whether I, you know how I move through the world matters. Yeah. How you move through, you know, it really, because people are seeing it's affecting them. Yeah. You're not just you. You're something so much, you're so much more to other people. Yeah. You yeah. Are, yeah. So, I used to have a problem mm-hmm. with like people perceiving me. I think mm-hmm. I was just having an existential crisis. Girl, you're an only child. <laughs> Let, let's begin there. Like existential <laughs> crisis is yeah. initially my brand. <laughs> I know. Let me tell you guys, before this interview, we were literally talking about heaven or hell. Yeah. That's how you know Mumbi has, you have a complex about <laughs> existentialism, you do. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So like, I don't know, just like the idea, like when I sat down and I was like, there's a different version of me that yes. exists in people's minds yes which is like insane you, you don't even know who that person is yeah and then yeah. so i once had a conversation with a friend of mine and i was mm. telling her that i feel like we are all the same person or spirit or entity experiencing itself like at a different yeah time mm. so like how you treat someone else is just like a mirror for like how you, how you treat, treat yourself. yourself so That's like true. yeah well that came from i read something that mm. okay this is weird but like so this story where like someone dies mm. and then so when they die obviously they want to figure out like okay who was right was mm. it like the christians like which like, oh i hope right? it wasn't the muslims no offense so <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah. buddha so anyway like, the guy is told that actually yeah. um you will live the life of like every person who ever was or is or ever will be so like if he died as like a middle-aged i don't know american man mm-hmm. he's gonna be reborn as like a peasant chinese girl in the 1920s <laughs> or something like that mm-hmm. so like at some point in your life you will be obama you yeah. will be hitler you will be mm. whoever like it's like the world is a single conscience yeah so like at some point like i am you all of us and yes. you are me which is it's tricky, a lot but it's it's true yeah. me what i know is the love you have for yourself is the love you have for others yeah you cannot love yourself more than you love others mm. and you cannot love others more than you love yourself mm. you can only pretend to you know like people pleasers people pleasers it's not even about the people they're trying to please it's about themselves yeah you see it's about yeah. trying to make myself palatable to these people yeah. it's always actually the most selfish people are people pleasers because they do not give other people an opportunity to see them mm. you see or yeah. experience them in the full entirety like experience me in my misgivings experience me in my you know me being annoying me being rude me being yeah magical and happy you know you're denying people that experience yeah and it's also selfish because you're not doing it for the betterment of the other person you're not, it's just you're not to satisfy them. your own ego yeah, it's yeah. true Okay. Anyway, um, do you have like, as a poet slash spoken word artist, mm-hmm. do you have a community of other artists that you feel you, that a support system, I would say, yeah. Do you have a support system of other artists? Yeah, and mm-hmm. ironically, a lot of them came from um, when I did Slam Africa mm-hmm. in 2016. Mm-hmm almost all the people i competed against Mm. and like now some of my like best friends in like the the poetry industry Mm. ended up writing poetry with a few of them Mm. organizing events with a few of them Mm. because at the end of the day you realize we're all here at that time like i don't think any of us knew exactly what we were doing Mm. like we're just writing this thing called spoken word and like trying to figure it out um yeah so that common goal Mm. um just made us like become really good friends i like that do you feel like these your work you know the painters have an obsession with something Mm. like there's some painters just love landscapes or Mm. some painters love painting naked women Mm. (laughs) <laughs> you know like do you do you feel like your art has certain 
themes or subjects that are prominent in it. Like if you're talking about flowers, mm -hmm. there's that undertone. Like it's just, yeah. mm, it's about that. If you're talking about parents, there's it. Mm, Cool. Yeah, for mm. sure. Yeah, I think most of my poems are love, sex, femininity, mm. African pride, mental health. Mm. Yeah. So those, those are, are your. Themes. Those are your. Is yeah, that's why I feel comfortable. Yeah, talking about. Yeah. I I I have a very bias towards this because I'm a feminist. Mm -hmm. So I I love poetry. You know, people say, oh, we've talked so much about feminism we've talked so much about you know african mm -hmm. pride mm -hmm. the patriarchy but they don't understand that the the, the effects that those oppressive systems have yeah. did like the effects you know yeah. are still going on yeah you know even when we die yeah they're still the present, effect yeah. will still be present you see there's there's no point in time where we will be like oh okay you know what yeah we've now, talked about uh, it enough yeah you know, no need but, no yeah. need to talk about you know africa and pride because i mean it is necessary. Very necessary. It is really necessary to teach it, to talk about it, you know, to emphasize it. Yeah. So I really appreciate that you do that. Mm, another invasive question. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, if I'm not invasive, who am I? Then, yeah. And yeah. what am I doing here? What's your, your star sign? I have to be in your business. I'm in your DMs <laughs> right now. <laughs> What's your star sign? I'm a cancer. <laughs> okay. No, I like I'm a cancers. What is it? Like a dancer. No, cancers are very like nurturing people. It's like, true. Yeah, you make people feel at home. I'm, no. Really? I'm, I'm very mothering. Yeah. I make people feel at home for sure. Mm -hmm. But I am. I can be mothering of. Oh my God, are you okay? Or I can be okay. mothering of. Talk Okay. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. That's... Then your mom is like. Yeah. Very cancer. Yeah. That's like I have those two sides. Mm -hmm. But the problem with me. <laughs> I am mothering, so I need people around me to be mothering to me, uh, like mother okay. me also. Yeah. You know. Okay. I love being mothered, and I also love being mothering. Okay. Anyway, but this is not about me. This <laughs> is not about me. Anyway, so uh, in on to the invasive question. Mm -hmm. Do you think art, like you as an artist, mm -hmm. is it sustainable? Are you are you able to eat? Are you able to pay your rent? Mm -hmm. Are you able to get an Uber? Are you able to sustain yourself? Or are you like, oh my god, I have to do spoken word and I have to like be a waitress or I have to like work a nine to five? Mm -hmm. Is it sustainable for you? I would say it is becoming sustainable, mm. thank God, mm. but it definitely took a lot of time because mm. I feel like spoken word, one, it's not that mainstream of an industry, not, yeah. so even like the shows we have, spoken word shows, mm. they don't pay, you know, as well as obviously like music. big music concerts pay. Um, but yeah, and again, just going back to the thing of like, I am a child of open mics. Mm -hmm. Like that was a lot of investment because you have mm -hmm. to, you know, transport to go to the open mic, to go back home, and it's always a yeah. recurring thing. Um, I remember in 2018 and 19, I started hosting my own shows and I was putting mm -hmm. my own resources on the line. Mm -hmm. I had to be the one emceeing at what? the gate, doing the ticketing, making sure vendors are set up, like doing all of that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, now I'm thankful for that because mm -hmm. now I think I can see the fruits of my labor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, yeah, and I think like a lot of artists, especially spoken word poets, become discouraged because mm -hmm. they're like, "Will I be able to eat from this thing?" And I feel like if you can, just like keep keep going to those open mic shows. Keep, yeah. yeah, the narrative of the starving artist. <laughs> you know they, when you tell your parents I wanna be an artist, it's like oh my god I have to sustain this child till they die. Right? Because like you're gonna be broke <laughs> forever. You're never going to have money. Like an artist, you never have money in your pocket. Yeah. But yeah, but we need to. I feel like we need to break that by also recognizing the versatility in art, like yeah. acknowledging different art forms in the whole, you know, entirety. Like, yeah. thing like spoken word is an art that should be respected just as much yeah. as music is respected, just as much as painting is respected, you know? Yeah. We need, we need to break that. Mm. Cause that's yeah, what's yeah. keeping people. Yeah, and I feel yeah. like people like um, are always willing to pay for art. Of if course, it's good, yeah. they're always willing to come to your shows. Mm. So I think it's also just the visibility mm. of it. Just mm. making sure your art is visible. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and like just support 
artist. Mm. Yeah. What would you say in your how long has your career been? Since I'd say from 26 2015. I don't know how to do math. That's um, like five years. That's or six. Like seven, seven, <laughs> I was six, so, seven. Don't say seven, because that would be so off. Wait. Eight. Girl, that's, that's <laughs> six years. Okay, yeah, six. If it was 20, yeah, 2016 is when I did Slum Africa. So. Oh, so let's say five. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. I mean, <laughs> we're not mathematicians. She's a poet and a writer, please. I studied rest... law actually, so like math well, is not my... Oh, it's not your thing? Yeah. I studied journalism. Yeah, so... The only math we studied was camera work and I sucked at it, so... That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, your career has been this, that number of years. Yes. In that amount of time, what would you say was the moment where you were like, you know what? I'm done. You know that moment, that mm. turning point where you're like, spoken word, I'm not writing this ish anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm, would you say you had that moment? I think, yes. Mm. I think, I want to say twice, but I can only remember oh. like vividly once. Mm -hmm. There was one time I said, I am not like this thing, I'm done. Mm. And I feel like maybe that was like sometime in 2019, maybe mm. beginning of 2019, I was mm. like, or 2018. No, yes, 2018. Because then what happened then is I got an opportunity to go and teach spoken word mm. in Dar es Salaam. Mm. And I was like, me? Mm. Me who is quitting this thing? Yeah. And I remember I also was invited to perform at a poetry show in Kampala. Mm. So I think when that happened, it was like, wait, mm. something is happening. I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't give up. So I think, I don't know, just, it was very well timed mm. because I think it made me realize that one, like my poetry is crossing like yes, yes. borders and people mm. actually listening, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, so I think yeah, in 2018, I was like, no, thank you. That was that when you had the 13 piercings? Yes, <laughs> I had my 13 piercings then. I didn't shave my hair until 2019. Oh, 2018 was like you were down for it. I don't know. No, I I don't even think I shaved my hair because like I was sad mm. or any. I don't know. It's like new 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 phase. It was just like a... Let me do it. Let me see what's... And I think I was like, I really liked Amber Rose. Ah, it was... Mm, for me, it was also... <laughs> those Amber Rose vibes though. Yeah, mm. I don't know, she... With the whole dyed blood hair. Yes. Amber Rose was doing... That girl. Amber Rose and Black China, like and those two yeah. were like... When they were best friends. I, I feel like they should like get back together. That was one good era. It was such a good duo. Yeah. And then Amber Rose with the slut walk. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yes. How good is that? Yeah. You know, how yeah. good is that? I feel like we need more people like those. Break. Yes. I, uh, let me tell you, if there's something I am passionate about, it's breaking conventionalism. Mm -hmm. Break it, you yeah. know. And you know, not break it like the millennials did it. Yeah. Break it and not bring it back. Mm -hmm. You see, because yeah. millennials had the chance mm -hmm. to make things better yeah. after boomers destroyed our world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> millennials had the opportunity to be different, to be the change, and yeah. then they just conformed. Yeah. But Gen Z now? We're not conforming. Yeah, not at all. We're not doing that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I feel like pretty much I've asked you everything. But, um, ooh, hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I feel like I should definitely ask this. Mm -hmm. Do you have a muse? What would you say is your muse? Or like your themes are your muse? Your black girl anger? Black girl, huh? Hmm. Um, so well I have a poem called um well it's about East Africa, just about mm. Africa which my muse is like um African women. Mm. I feel like African women are so not even just like beautiful like physically, no. but like the mind of like the African woman is so mm. beautiful. Um my heartbreak poems I guess were inspired by Ex exes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I once, um, um, I always keep saying this, I once mm. performed a poem that I had written about someone and they were in the audience and then... Was that weird? I mean, okay, for me, I didn't think it was weird because I didn't think they, I don't know, it wasn't weird for me. And then afterwards, they're like, you need to stop writing poetry about me. Taylor Swift. And I was just like... <sighs> 
I'm not gonna stop. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop, get blocked. Mm, period. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think just like, yeah, people who I've interacted with are. Yeah. Muse. Yeah, like the first poem I wrote about like a boy in my class. Like shout out to him. Yeah. Shout out to you. What was his name? I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> say it. Shout out to was he cute? Yeah, he was. Oh, shout out to all the cute boys. <laughs> <laughs> all the cute boys yeah. out there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, do you feel like there's something I should ask that I haven't? Do my job for me. Hmm. Mm. Or is that something you wanna ask me? Um, it will, I wish I had like nails done. This would be so, so much better. I look yeah. like a child. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. This I don't like this question, but like people always ask it. Like, where do you see yourself in like five years? Oh, I should definitely ask you that. Where do you? But see I've asked you first. In five years. <laughs> <laughs> I should definitely have asked that. Where do I see myself in five years? Hmm. Five years will be twenty. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Yes. I'll be twenty-six. Oh, okay. Insane. I can't even conjure that in my mind. Yeah. But um, I would say I would have a novel started if not done. Okay. I'm really passionate about writing. Honestly, I I, I say this every day when I wake up. All I want to do is write. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to do I don't want to do so many things. I just want to I want to make stories. Yeah. You know, I want to write stories about people I've never met. I want to write stories about people places I've never been to, people I've never seen. I just want to write. But definitely in five years I want to have a book, if not completed, mm-hmm. at least almost done. Okay. Yeah, I would really want to do that in five years. And also wanna be, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Buddha, but um, um, I'm trying to get like <laughs> I can't you see if we say these things and like I'm supposed to be a professional <laughs> but yes she said it from her lips no mine okay. but no um, yes no you tell me what you see yourself hmm. in five years I don't know I asked that because have you ever seen the Beyonce interview when someone asked her like 10 years ago yeah. like where do you want to be and she was like I want to have some kids I want to have a business and everything she said came true came true yeah. when she turned 40 yeah and it's like wow the power of just like manifesting, manifesting and, and yeah. saying it and putting it out into and the putting universe. in the words yeah you know Beyonce is the most hardworking person in Hollywood right? honestly I would say yeah so you tell me um, so Are you gonna be married? Yes. Say yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I will be turning twenty eight that year. Girl. Uh huh. So. Yeah. Gonna be mm. a twenty eight year old just in the streets, you know. Just you know. <laughs> hopefully, I won't belong to the streets then. Never. <laughs> like, but the streets are lucky comfortable though. Loki, right? Loki, kind of comfortable. Yeah. Loki, like, very entertaining in the streets. And it's like <laughs> predictable. Like, I mean, you. It's very predictable. Yeah. But we have to take the risk. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Hmm. So I want. I would also like to have a book. Well, I like, I have a ah. book now, but like a novel, a collection of short stories, mm. short African stories. Um, Ooh, I already cool. have two stories. I want like mm. six stories to make a collection. Mm. Um, so definitely that. I want mm. to call it Clap at the End. Oh, it's like Chimamanda's the thing around your neck. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, like that's so profound. Why do we have the same? I don't we're like the same person. But yeah, it um, was really good to talk to you. I think I've asked all the questions. It was really nice. I love you, Mumbi. Oh. I feel like we should do this again. Yes, we should. You know, we have sure. such good chemistry on camera. I, know. I hope we look as good. And off camera. And off camera. Ah! <laughs> Shorty! <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's basically it, guys. Thank you for giving us your time. Hopefully you'll watch this till the end so that you see how amazing Mumbi's mind works and how she is so in tune with who she is and everything around her. Yeah. <laughs>